Greetings, and welcome to the inaugural episode of Master Chess Theater. In today's episode, we will be exploring a brilliancy by the late international master Emery Tate against the highly accomplished grandmaster Leonid Udison from 1997. During this presentation, I will be relying heavily on fond memories of Emery Tate explaining the intricacies of this game to me personally, as well as Professor Dom Shabazz's superb analysis in his book entitled Triple Exclaim, The Life and Games of Emery Tate, Chess Warrior. Emery Tate was more than an international master at chess. He was an icon of African-American chess, a poet, a fighter, a master of languages, a father, a wordsmith, and oftentimes a misunderstood genius. Wherever he roamed, Emery Tate acquired legions of fans fascinated by his enigmatic personality, incredible confidence, and natural showmanship. To many in the chess world, Emery was a boastful stranger, and to a lucky few, including myself, a good friend. Leonid Udison is a highly respected grandmaster who played for the USSR on a gold medal team at the 1990 Chess Olympiad, and later in his career, ranking in the top 10 internationally, has twice competed in the candidates tournament for the World Chess Championship. Today he is a highly successful chess teacher based in Brooklyn who was the primary coach for many of today's top professional players. On page 124 of Triple Exclaim, The Life and Games of Emery Tate, Chess Warrior, Professor Diam Shabazz describes Emery Tate's performance. Emery Tate was a master tactician. No other game of his illustrates this point better than the scintillating win over Russian Grandmaster Leonid Udison. In this masterpiece, Tate takes a page out of Mikhail Tal's attacking gems against his trainer, Alexander Koblenz. Similarly, this game was Tate's prized art piece, and he was very careful whom he trusted with its analysis. Emery Tate starts the game with pawn to e4. Leonid Udison responds with the Sicilian defense. To knight f3, 2d6, 3d4, cx d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, all standard Sicilian stuff, knight c3, a6. And we have the Sicilian Nydorf. Black's last move prevents white from placing his knights or bishop on b5. Named after Miguel Nydorf, this opening has become one of the most widely studied in all of chess. 6, bishop c4. Emery chooses the fischer sozin attack, which was a specialty of Bobby Fischer. Invented by Vinimin Sozin, this line was hardly worth mentioning until Bobby Fischer played it in several key victories. 6 e6. Udison wisely plays e6 to remove the influence of White's bishop from f7. 7 bishop b3. Fischer and Tate both preferred this precautionary retreat as the bishop will almost undoubtedly end up on b3 after Black plays pawn to b5. 7, knight b to d7. Historically, the second most popular move behind 7b5, black's position remains flexible and the knight on d7 can now reposition to c5 to threaten the bishop on b3 and pawn on e4. 8, queen e2. Here the queen is setting the stage for a pawn thrust to the center with pawn to f4 followed by e5. 8, knight c5. Black seems to be scoring well with this plan in the 21st century. 9. Pawn to g4. This chaotic attack had only been seen once in 1967 in Garcia vs. O'Kelly, Costa del Sol, and once in 1968, Messine vs. Minnick in Belgrade, and White did not win either of those encounters. Black plays 9b5. Dom Shabazz states on page 126, Black must react quickly. It is interesting that usually one would counter a flank attack by a central thrust. 
but Udison tries a flank attack of his own. Had Udison played the central thrust of e5, Amory could have played knight f5, g6, knight e3, bishop h6. Interesting position and roughly equal. However, had Udison tried 9h6, Amory told me he was planning 10g5, hxg5, bishop takes g5, bishop e7, h4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop takes g5, knight takes g5, queen takes g5, hxg5, rook takes h1 check, king d2, rook takes a1, and then knight f5. Emery calculated this line during the game. It just really demonstrates how far ahead players of this caliber are able to calculate when necessary. So getting back to Udison's 9 b5, Emery Tate plays 10 g5, maintaining the initiative, knight f to d7, 11 bishop d5. After staring at the position for over 30 minutes, Emery Tate dares his formidable opponent to take the bishop offering. Udison decided against accepting the offering as capturing would have allowed Emery Tate to enter the complexities he desired. For example, if exd5, Emery had knight c6, queen b6, exd5 check, knight e5. Here Emery told me that he would have continued with f4, bishop g4, queen e3, knight d3 check, cxd3, queen takes e3, bishop takes e3, knight takes d3 check, king d2, knight takes b2, king c2, knight c4, and after 20 bishop d4, Emery felt the better player would win. I quote him as saying, I've always liked those odds. Back to Udison's 11 bishop b7, 12 bishop takes b7, knight takes b7. Emery enjoyed the fact that he compelled both of his opponent's knights to retreat and felt like he was gaining the upper hand here. 13a4, another fork in the road for black, and both paths offer Emery something he desired. Udison played 13bxa4, however, had he chosen to play 13b4, Emery was planning knight d5, and then if exd5, knight c6, queen c7, exd5 check, knight e5, and f4. And certainly Tate is playing with the initiative for the win here. Returning to 13bx a4, Udison gives Emery a golden opportunity to be creative with a rook lift, a motif Emery loved to use with great effect. Rook takes a4. And Tate was happy to have his rook enter the game. 14 knight bc5. Udison brings his knight back to c5 with the threat. 15, rook a3. But of course, Emery preferred the rook on the much more open third rank anyways. 15, queen b6. With every move, Udison is catching up on development. 16, castle. Emery stated to me that he considered 16, knight d5, but wasn't comfortable with knight d5, exd5, 17, exd5, check, knight e5, f4, queen b4, c3, knight d3 check, king d2, queen b7, fx e5, knight takes e5, 22, rook e1, bishop e7, king c2, castle. Emery felt black would have better peace coordination and king safety. So after Udison's 15, queen b6, Emery castled, move 16, castle, bishop e7, and 17, King H1. Let's read a little bit from page 
128 of Dom Shabazz's book, Triple Exclaim, The Life and Games of Emery Tate, Chess Warrior. Describing move 17, King H1, Shabazz states, This move is twofold. It increases king safety and now makes the G file available for a rook battering ram. According to ancient Chinese philosopher and military strategist Sun Tzu, quote, To a surrounded enemy, you must leave a way of escape. Show him there is a road to safety, and so create in his mind the idea that there is an alternative to death. Then strike. Tate gives a glimmer of hope, and Eudison flees. To safety? By 17, Castling. Tate plays 18b4. It's hard to imagine that playing pawn to b4 here is actually the beginning of an attack on Black's castled king. Attacks like these are literally out of this world, which is why Emery's friends sometimes joked and referred to Emery Tate as extraterrestrial, or E.T. 18, knight a4. Eudison would certainly not play 18, qx b4, as that fails to 19, knight c6. Queen b7. Knight takes e7, check. After 18, knight a4... Emery Tate plays 19, knight f5. Tate Shinkai. Emery was extremely proud of this positional sacrifice and enjoyed stumping classes of advanced young students on this move. I took notes during one of these occasions, and what follows is Emery's own analysis of moves suggested by students. The first student suggested 19, rook takes a4, which Emery said is worth investigating, but after 19, qxd4, Bishop b2, bishop takes g5, rook g1, bishop f6, knight d1, and queen b6, black is a pawn up. 19, bishop e3 was also suggested. Emery showed us after black's 19, nx c3, rook takes c3, queen b7, knight c6, rook f e8, knight e7 check, Rook e7 is okay, but still not as good as the move from the game. After 19, knight takes a4, queen x d4, c3, queen a7, and white has just created too many weaknesses without compensation. After 19, f4, black punishes white's mistake with knight takes c3, rook takes c3, q x d4. And finally, a student suggested... 1995. Emery smiled when this was suggested by the young master. 19 exd5, 20 knight f5, rook f8, rook takes a4, bishop f8, bishop e3, queen b7, rook f to a1, and upon close inspection, 19 knight d5 is not as good as Emery's 19 knight f5, as black's king remains secure. So we return to the actual game with 19 f5, triple exclaim. Eudison plays 19 ex f5 because knight takes c3, knight e7 check, king h8, rook takes c3, rook f to e8, knight c6, rook a to c8, and bishop e3 is easily winning for white. After 19 exf5, Emery Tate responds with 20 knight d5. This is a most powerful knight move, which exposes black's weaknesses on both sides of the board. 20 queen d8, black must retreat. 21 exf5. And suddenly it becomes easy to see how all of white's pieces can attack black's king. Eudison plays 21, rook e8. 22, queen h5. When there is blood in the water, attack. Black plays 22, knight a to b6. Lena Eudison falters under the pressure with this inaccuracy, but even 22, g6, fx, g6, fx, g6, queen g4. Emery would have had to pause his attack to relocate the queen. Knight a, b6. However, knight takes b6, queen takes b6, qx d7, bishop f8, rook f3, rook e7, queen a4, queen b5, queen takes b5, ax b5, rook d3, 
rook a1, c3, bishop g7, and rook g1 leaves white with winning prospects. So Emery was convinced, even had Leonid Yudison not played 22 knight ab6, he was still going to win that game. 23, rook h3. And now Yudison must hang on for dear life. Black plays 23, knight f8 to stop the checkmate threat on h7. 24, f6. Emery is assaulting his opponent's castled king with surgical precision. 24, knight takes d5. Had Yudison played 24, bishop takes f6, Emery suggested that after 25, knight takes f6, gx f6, gx f6, queen takes f6, rook g1 check, queen g6, bishop b2, rook e1, rook takes e1, queen h5, rook takes h5, knight g6, and 31, rook a1. That white is clearly better. But Udison played 24, knight takes d5. Emery Tate responded with 25, fx g7. And Leonid Udison played king takes g7. Which is far from satisfactory for black, but so are the other options. For instance, if 25, f5, then gx f8 equals queen plus sign. If 25, bishop f6, then gx f6, knight takes f6. Again, g pawn takes f8. Queen, check. King takes f8. Bishop h6, check. King e7. Bishop g5. King d7. Queen f7, check. Queen e7. Queen takes f6. Queen takes f6. And bishop takes f6. White is easily winning. And finally, if 25, knight f6. Again, we have gx f8. Queen, check. King takes f8. Queen h6, check. King g8. Gx f6. Bishop takes f6. Rook g1, check. Bishop g5. Bishop takes g5. Queen d7. Bishop f6, check. Queen g4. And rook takes g4, checkmate. So back to the actual game. After Udison plays 25, king takes g7. Emery Tate responds with 26. Bishop b2, check. King g8, 27, g6. Emery Tate is just displaying brutally perfect attacking technique. 27, bishop f6. 28, gx f7, check. King moves to h8, rook g1. Emery's only inaccuracy in this attack was missing a mate in 6. For instance, he could have played... 29, queen g4, knight e6, rook g1, knight g5, queen takes g5, rook e5, queen h6, rook h5, queen g7, bishop takes g7, and bishop takes g7 mate. But even the slight inaccuracy left Udison with no chances of recovering, as after 29, rook g1, Black played 29, rook e1, 30, rook takes e1, bishop takes b2, 31, rook e8, knight f6, 32, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, queen h6, knight e4, queen h4, knight f6, rook g3, knight from the 8th rank goes to d7, and Emery played 36, queen g5. Udison is left with no way to stop the inevitable checkmates. I hope you enjoyed our episode. For more information on Emery Tate and other examples of his chess, please follow the links under this video. To get your own copy of Triple Exclaim, The Life and Games of Emery Tate Chess Warrior by Professor Dom Shabazz, click here. And finally, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. I have been your host, Chris Torres, and this has been Master Chess Theater.